Welcome back. We're going to continue our study of polynomials. We've been factoring them and all that fun stuff. Today we're actually going to be doing what we call finding the zeros of polynomials. All right, The zeros are very important and we'll, we'll touch on them all year and pretty much the rest of the time you study math you're going to talk about the zeros of polynomials. So it's a pretty important thing. So first of all we're going to start with probably the easiest ones you've ever done in Algebra 2. We're going to solve a couple of these equations. 4 times a equals 0. So if I divide by 4, a would equal 0. In other words, when I have two things I'm multiplying here, and I know one of them, the other, if it equals 0, it has to be 0. What times 6 equals 0? Again, a has to equal 0. Negative 10,000 times a equals 0. Whenever I multiply two numbers and the answer is 0, one of the answers must be 0. A lot of you don't like fractions, but I when I multiply by something that has to equal zero, that something has to be zero. In other words, we have this big property here. You're, you're kind of seeing this. It doesn't matter what I do. Anytime I multiply, it could be two things, could be three things, could be four things. Anytime I multiply and my answer is zero, well, one of the factors, one of the things I'm multiplying has to equal zero. And that really does give us this really great and more, more importante property. It's called the zero product property. And that says if I have two things, a times b and it equals zero, then either the first factor, a, equals zero, or the second factor, b, equals zero. All right? So whenever you have two things multiplying, one of them is going to equal zero. So take a look at this. I have two things right here. I have one factor, now it's a little bit more extensive, and I have a second factor, and I'm multiplying them. So I can set each of these individual factors equal to zero to determine what my x is. So here I would subtract one, zero minus negative, uh, minus one is negative one. So x could be negative one or I could add one here, right? Add one, two x would equal one, divide by two, x could equal one half. In other words, if I were to plug negative one in, negative one plus one, this whole thing would be zero, then zero times that would be equal zero. Likewise, if I were to plug a half into here, two times a half is one, one minus one is zero, zero times that equals zero. Zero product property is really, really big, and you can see where we're going with this. We're going to solve things by factoring them and then setting them equal to zero. Awesome. So here we're tasked with the directions of find the zeros. All right, that seems simple enough. So we talked about this before. We need to factor, and then we're going to set those factors equal to zero. All right? Equal to zero. All right, so when I look at this, the first thing is, I guess, actually, we should set the whole thing equal to zero, right? Step number one would set the whole thing equal to zero. And we have some choices here, but the choice you always, always want to make sure is that your highest exponent, in this case, it would be this term, negative 5x squared, is positive. And since that's a negative, I'm going to move that to the other side. So I'm going to add 5x squared over here. So now I have 0 equals 5x squared plus 12x minus 9. Now we need to factor a little bit. 5 times negative 9 is negative 45, and I need it to add to 12. Two numbers that multiply to negative 45 and add to 12 are 15 and negative 3. So now we have 0 equals 5x squared plus 15x minus 3x minus 9. Let's group this up. First group, I can take a 5x out. So that gives me x plus 3. Second group, I can take a negative 3 out, and that negative is important, right? So that's x plus 3. So now my two factors are x plus 3, here and here, and 5x minus 3. So now I need to set each of these things to equal to 0 so I know what my answers could be. So x plus 3 could equal 0. Subtract 3, and I'd get x is negative 3. 5x minus 3 could equal 0. Add 3. 5x equals 3. Divide by 5. x equals 3 fifths. So there we have it. Those are our two zeros of that polynomial equation. All right? Let's try another one.
So now we have 8n to the third minus 3n squared equals 32n minus 12. So again, we want to get our highest degree, make it positive. So this is to the third power. So I'm going to move negative 32n to the other side. And I'm going to add 12 to the other side. All right, so now I have 8n to the third minus 3n squared minus 32n plus 12 equals 0. Uh, I'm going to group right off the bat here because they have four terms. Here I can only take an n squared out, so that'll give me 8n minus 3. 32 and 12, I can take a negative 4 out, so that's 8n minus 3. I have 8n minus 3 is one of my factors. And then I have n squared minus 4. What do you notice about n squared minus 4? Difference of squares, right? So now, this is n minus 2 and n plus 2. Hopefully, if you haven't been in a mastery-based classroom before, now you're starting to see why it's so important. If you didn't learn how to factor in sections 1 through 3, you're going to be hurting today, all right? All right. 8n minus 3 equals 0, that's 1. Or it could be n minus 2 equals 0. Or it could be n plus 2 is 0. Because if any of one of these three factors is 0, when I multiply, it's going to equal 0. So let's do this first one. Add 3, 8n equals 3. Divide by n, or divide by 8, and I get 3 8 is my first answer. This one, add 2, could be 2. Subtract 2, negative 2. There we have it. All right, these instructions are a little bit different. This one just simply says solve this equation. Solving is just the same thing as finding the zeros, all right? We set it equal to zero, which in this case it already is, and then we solve. Now notice we have this thing equals zero and this factor equals zero. If we can look at this and set this equal to zero, That could equal zero, and I have factors of that, right? I factor that, and then I have factors of this could equal zero. Then I just simply, I have four things that could equal zero. So let's take a look at this first one. So what are two numbers that multiply to 72 and add to negative 17? There's no leading coefficient, so we know this is going to be a V, and that would be negative 8 and negative 9. This is a difference of, of squares, so I know the first is going to be 2V, and I know the last is going to be the square root of 9 is 3. So plus and minus 3. So now I have four factors. i got to set them all equal to 0. So this would be v equals 8. Now, obviously some of you are looking at this right now and you say, ah, v is 8. You know that. And you're doing your head. That's fine. Just be careful. All right? I see a lot of kids do that. And then they make mistakes when it gets to ones like this. And they just say, v is 3. And that's not true. So this would be 2v equals 3, v would equal 3 halves. This one would be negative 3 halves. So we have four possible answers. Do you need all four? Yeah, yeah, you need all four. All right, sorry about that. All right, this says, oh, they already give us one. They know that we, that we know that this is a solution. All right, um, and it's to this polynomial. Well, this is kind of like polynomial division, except for before when we did polynomial di long division, right? We were told we were told a factor, and we had something out here that was a factor. So we need to make this into a factor. So <clears throat> if that's a zero. That means x equals negative 2. Let's set it equal to 0. Add 2. x plus 2 equals 0. So there's, now we know that that is one of the factors. So I'm going to put that in here. x plus 2 is one of the factors. Now I can do my long division. So what do I have to multiply x by to get 4x to the third? 4x squared. That would be 4x to the third. 4 times 2 is 8x squared. And remember, we subtract down, so that's gone. This gives me 9x squared. Bring this next one down, plus 9x. Would I have to multiply x to get 9x squared? That would be 9x. 9x squared plus 18x. 
Remember, I subtract, so that's cancel. This is going to be a negative 9, excuse me, x. That's terrible. Negative 9x. Bring that down. Minus 18. What I have to multiply x by? That's going to be a negative 9. So that'll be negative 9x. Negative 9 times 2 is negative 18. And subtract them. Those cancel out. So now I have this polynomial, which remember, now we have to factor that. So that's going to be 4x squared plus 9x minus 9. Is this a lengthy process? Yes. 4 times negative 9, I need two factors that multiply to negative 36 and add to 9. So 4x squared, let's see, 12x minus negative 3. 12 times negative 3 is negative 36 and adds to 9. Let's group it. So now we know we have 4x on the outside, then I have x plus 3. Here I can take a negative 3 out, and I have x plus 3. All right, so this is going to be x plus 3 times 4x minus 3. And remember, we're solving, so I have to set these equal to 0. x plus 3 equals 0. 4x minus 3 equals 0. Subtract. Over here, add 3 and divide by 4. So our answers are negative 3 and 3 fourths, correct? Well, somewhat correct. Don't forget, they gave you one of the answers. All right, we want to find all the solutions. Well, one of them is given to you. Don't forget the one they gave you. So many kids forget that one that they gave you, and then it's trouble. All right, don't forget that one at all. All right, so right now we have 2n minus 3 squared minus 80 equals 2 times 2n minus 3. This, this looks really tough. All right, and in fact, it is kind of tricky. But one thing I want you to notice here is that we have a couple of things that are exactly the same. 2n minus 3, right here. I'm just going to circle it. Whoops. This right here. It's here, and it is over here, all right? So it's kind of like, I call it a blob, all right? I call it a blob. So what I want us to think about right now is I'm going to call that blob x. And wherever I see that blob, it is equal to x now. And in, what is x? 2n minus 3. So let's change this equation. So this blob is now x squared minus 80 equals 2 times this blob again, which is x. Well, now that's not bad. x squared, let's subtract 2x. Let's make sure we have to, remember, get it in a standard form. Highest exponent to lowest exponent. Now we can factor. Two numbers that multiply to negative 80 and add to negative 2 would be negative 10 and 8. Set those equal to 0. and solve. So x equals 10 and x equals negative 8. Now we just have to remember our original variable was n. We're solving for n. What is x? Wherever I see x I can put 2n minus 3. So instead of x I'm putting 2n minus 3 equals 10. Instead of x I'm putting 2n minus 3 equals negative 8. Now I can solve. Add 3, divide by 2, and one of our answers is 13 halves. Or come over here, add 3. Negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. Divide by 2. And our answer is negative 5 halves. So when you have a situation that looks like this, plug in some blob. I call it blob. All right. And simplify it for yourself. All right. I want you to pause the video. Try these two right here on your own and see how you do. So on this first one, the first thing we need to do is get all our variables on one side, all our terms on one side. And when we did that, we had four terms, standard form. Remember, it had to be highest exponent to lowest. Then we grouped. And when we grouped, we got a difference of squares. Solved it 7 fourths, 1 half, or negative 1 half. Over here, I said I'm going to let x equal this blob, p minus 4. x is going to equal this blob, p minus 4. So then I changed it to x squared 
plus 2x equal 24. Easy enough to factor. Once I got my x's, I re-plugged in p minus 4 and solved it for that. If you need to and want to pause and look at my solutions a little bit longer, that would be great. Anything to help you learn. Remember, it's all about learning here. Okay? Go out in that world and be the change you want to see. Have a great day.